America is facing a number of uh, crises from economic and political to moral and cultural. But my next guest says the real crisis facing America is a worldview crisis. Recently, the Cultural Research Center at Arizona Christian University, in collaboration with the nonprofit Foundations of Freedom, released the findings from its extensive groundbreaking project on millennials in America. Now, I warn you, many of the findings are troubling, but, but there are some bright spots and reasons for hope. With me now to talk about the findings is George Barna, who is the director of Arizona Christians Cultural Research Center, as well as a senior fellow here at the Family Research Council Center for Biblical Worldview. George, always great to have you on the program. Good to be with you again, Tony. Thanks for having me. All right. How would you characterize millennials based on your study? Let's start with that definition. Well, I mean, the way we measure them is people born between 1984 to 2002. That makes them 18 to 37 years of age. The way I would characterize them as a generation is confused and in pain. I think what we discovered through the research is that this is a group that uh, has really been going through a number of transitions trying to find themselves. And unfortunately, they bought into the cultural mandate, if you will, that to find yourself, you need to look inside rather than look to God. Yeah, looking through the uh, extensive survey, it uh, I mean, just to summarize some of these uh, elements, they're searching for purpose in life. They have a crisis of meaning. Um, they have uh, record-breaking rates of suicide in this generation. I mean, um, they struggle with relationships. I mean, there's something missing. What is it? Well, again, Tony, I, I don't want to be like the hammer that sees everything as a nail that needs to be pounded. But when I look at all these issues, I think, oh, but it all goes back to worldview. Why is that? Well, it's because your worldview is what causes you to make every decision you make. And so if we look at the struggles, the challenges, the troubles that they're facing, it has to do with the fact that their worldview is errant. It's not serving them well. And so if they had a biblical worldview, most, if not all of those issues would simply disappear. It's that way in our culture at large. You know, you opened up the segment by talking about all the different crises that we hear about on the evening news, the economic crisis, the political crisis, the border crisis, et cetera. All of those would be taken care of if America would get its worldview right. And what we know with millennials is only 4% of them have a biblical worldview. Now, I don't want to beat them up too badly. That's not too different than the rest of the nation where, you know, we've got 6% among all adults. So if we can take care of that crisis, much of the rest will take care of itself. Well, I'm with you. I, I agree 100%. So you can beat that nail all you want around here because, look, a, a worldview not only helps you understand, a biblical worldview not only helps you understand the world around you, but it helps give you meaning in the world in which you live. And that's how we put all these pieces together, because without it, quite frankly, it doesn't make sense. And to me, just these findings on their face are evident of what's missing. And, and, and one of these is it, that three out of every 10 identify as LGBTQ. I mean, there is, there's a crisis of meaning. There's a crisis of identity that only God can provide the way forward. Well, it, it's true. And when we look at all of these findings, I mean, basically what it comes back to is they had to make a choice. What is life about? And their decision, their choice was that life is all about me. Now, a biblical worldview would tell us, no, no, no. Life is about God. It's all about him. He created us for his purposes and so if we want to understand our meaning, if we want to get satisfaction and fulfillment in life, we've got to go back to him. We derive that from him and the purpose that he's created for us. The, the general purpose that all of us have is to know, love, and serve him with all our heart, mind, strength, and soul. And if you start there and then work out from that, life takes on a lot of meaning. But if you start with the assumption that life is about me, I've got to feel it. I've got to sense it. I've got to experience it. 
There is no absolute moral truth. It's all about me. It comes back to me. If I just dig down deep enough, I'll figure it all out. That's a losing strategy. Okay, so we, we've kind of talked a little bit about the, the, the what, what we're looking at. Let, let's talk about the how. How did we get here? You, you talk about the, the lack of a biblical worldview, but you can't have a biblical worldview if you reject God and the Bible. Uh, so what's, what's the religious makeup of this group? Yeah, I mean, we, most people don't understand that a worldview starts developing at a very young age and is completed by the age of 13. So what happens spiritually with us when we're very young makes a big difference. What this is basically telling us is that with this particular generation, we didn't do a very good job of raising them up in the way that they need to go for the rest of their life. What we basically did was we turned them over to the culture and said, look, you disciple them. You implant ideas in their minds and hearts about what is right, about what is meaningful, about what's significant. We can see how well that's worked. But, you know, really, when we look at how do we deal with this, the church has to be uh, I'm, ever I'm not, present. I'm not person. there yet. I'm, I'm going to get there. I, I, I got another question here I want to unpack because it's going to factor into that, hold that thought. Okay. All right. Let me ask you this question. Is this not a byproduct of pushing God and religion out of the public space, out of our schools, out of the culture? If we've turned, I mean, this isn't the first generation that's been heavily influenced by the culture, but it is the first generation that's had a culture that has completely pushed God out. Yeah, and Tony, when we study what is it that causes people to think what they think and do what they do, we find that there are a handful of key influencers and those happen to be the media, the family, public policy, schools, and peers. Those are the dominant ones for young people. The real big one is the media. And so if you wanna know why people are turning to Marxism, secular humanism, postmodernism, Eastern mysticism, and so forth, so much of it has to do with, well, that's what they're hearing in the movies they watch. That's what they're listening to in the music that they play. That's what they're reading in the kinds of books and online websites that they visit, the kinds of posts they're getting, the video games they're playing. And so you, you combine that with the fact that parents have taken a hands-off approach to worldview development and said there are other people who are experts at this. I'm going to let them do it. And this is what we wind up with. Okay. Now we can go to the way forward because every problem has a solution. And this challenge is an opportunity for the church and for parents if we will take on the responsibility God has given us. And it really is. And Tony, you know, back a few years ago, you and I on the program talked about research we had done that showed that the church was not addressing the issues of the day. The pastor said, yes, the Bible speaks to it, but I'm not going to speak to it, not from the pulpit. That's too controversial. And so this is some of the payback for our unwillingness to address issues from a biblical standpoint. What we've got to have is a church that is willing to talk about what people are going through, yeah. what we're living with, the kinds of questions that are being asked in the public square. And so we can't retreat behind the church walls and say, I don't want people to get upset with me if I tell them what the Bible says about these issues. They may not like that, and then they may not come back, and then we won't be able to have as big a church. That's not the issue. The issue here is the issue of truth. It is. In fact, Are we I, willing to give people that? That was a message I had for pastors on Monday night. I spoke to uh, the Louisiana Baptist uh, Pastors Conference in Monroe, Louisiana on Monday night, and it just so happened that about two weeks ago I was on Capitol Hill um, speaking to, uh, actually providing a devotional to the, uh, the Republican Study Committee. It's public. It was out there, so I can say it. Uh, I occasionally go in and do a devotional for them. And, and we had a little extra time, so they were asking questions, and, and, and one of the members of Congress asked, and I shared this with the pastors on Monday night, asked, where are the pastors? Uh, why are they not speaking to these issues that so many people want us to legislate on, but the pastors are not speaking to? And that's not the first time I've heard that. 
And so I, I think it is incumbent upon the pastors to systematically, not cherry pick, but systematically walk through Scripture and help people understand in their congregations how to apply the Word of God to the world in which we live. That's the only way we develop a biblical worldview. It is that intersection of the Scripture and the world in which we live. Yeah, we're not at fault for not giving people a lot of information. We do that well. There are two things that we don't do well. One is connect the dots between those biblical principles, help people to see how it fits a decision-making matrix right. that will help us to make the right choices, and then how do you apply that in your life? If we can help them make those principled connections and then figure out how to apply it in life, that's going to turn things around. Yeah, and and George Barna, I'm, I'm not, you're not here to do this. I'm not here to beat up on pastors or anybody else. We're just pointing out that there's been a void, a vacuum that's been created that we have not spoken to. So that's one of the reasons for our Center for Biblical Worldview is to help pastors, and we have a number of publications, pastors available for you to help you look at what Scripture says about these issues so you can teach your people and develop within them a biblical worldview. But George, there's more. In fact, the one that I'm most passionate about, and I think you share this, is not just equipping the pastors, because sometimes that's too late to really affect the true change we need. We've got to get the parents beginning when those kids are in the cradle, probably still in the womb, helping develop that biblical worldview. Yeah, I mean, a biblical worldview starts developing at the age of 15 months. It's almost fully formed by the age of 13. So that says that's really where the battle is won or lost. And if churches want to help parents do that, they need all the help they can get. They can't give what they don't have. And so what churches can be doing is equipping parents with that kind of information and encouragement and other resources to help them get the job done. Don't let them drop the kids off as if the church is a babysitting service. It's not. What you need to do is preparing the parents to do the brunt of the work and the church is there to support them in doing that. Yeah, in fact, we've even discussed uh, creating curriculum for pastors that when they do the uh, um, dedication of children in a lot of the churches when they're first born, is that the parents have to go through a class that would incorporate developing that biblical worldview. It is so critical, and it's not something that just happens. You've got to be intentional about developing, having those conversations of that intersection between Scripture and its application to the world around us. And one of the things that pastors can do to facilitate that is help parents know the significant role they play in the development of the worldview of their children and the incredibly significant role worldview plays in the way that they're going to live the rest of their lives. If they understand that, no parent wants to fail at being a great parent especially those who love God. They want to do the best they can, but sometimes they don't even realize how critically important worldview is yeah. and the necessary role that they play within it. All right, George, we got 30 seconds left, uh, so I want you to fix the world in 30 seconds. Uh, look, I know the situation is bad, but can we turn it around? We can turn it around. We've got 15 million adults in America that have a biblical worldview. You can't show me a place where a movement of 15 million people couldn't turn an entire nation, the entire world upside down. We can do it. We just have to be focused on it and committed to it. And we're committed, and together we're going to make this uh, our life's calling and mission to uh, advance a biblical worldview. I know the left is going crazy right now uh, that we're going to take over the world. But we're going to, I don't know, we may not take over the world, but we're certainly going to help build the kingdom. Uh, George Barna, always great to talk with you. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you, Tony. All right.